What's up guys, I'm back and I'm Kay, and I'm the girl that likes to smoke and talk about anime. And today, it's just me, and I'm here to talk about episode 9 of Yashihime. So, this episode was called Mefuku the Miyoju, and no surprise here, it was yet another filler episode. I am getting a little annoyed with this, only because we get one little bit of information and then we go like so many episodes before we go back to that not gonna talk too much about what happened in this episode because it doesn't really matter um i could go in depth about connecting things back to inuyasha but i don't want to so what we did find out that is relevant is we met another one of the four perils whose name is content that's it that's the biggest part of this episode that you need to tuck in your pocket and take with you that's it uh weird wizardy see me guy has two sub demons that follow him around he uses these little paper talismans to cast spells that's all i'm gonna say on that aside from getting introduced to content um i don't really have any other comments about what happened in this episode we helped the kid get his daddy armor back hooray um, I do have a few issues with this episode. First one being, um, this episode kind of made me start disliking twins as a set together. And the reason why I say that is because when we're visiting GUV, um, and he's telling us about the next bounty, um, Roja's all excited to go off and get started and the twins are kind of like eh, we're not really fucking with it which is fine I guess um, it does end up hurting Maroha's feelings but I mean if it was just that that's understandable so it makes sense that you know we kind of all just met yeah, we've been helping each other out, but going so far as to call us comrades at this moment might be a little early. And I get where Maroha's coming from. She's looking at it from the family aspect of it. And in her head, she's been alone for so long. It's kind of like, well, she was liking having the company around. So if it was just that, I wouldn't be as upset, but that's not it. So the reason why the twins said no shows that they too are really not on the same page. Toa wants to find the dream butterfly still. Setsuna kind of wants her to let it go. She kind of just wants to focus on demon slayer business. She didn't really want to run off with Moroha, but she also doesn't, she's not with the shit that Toe was on. She doesn't really care, or at least she's acting like she doesn't. GB basically ends up telling Toa that he hasn't heard anything about the Dream Butterfly, but maybe the best way for her to get information or to find it would be to put a bounty on it. This is what starts a series of events that make it so I don't really like the twins too much after this episode, because it's only after the suggestion of putting a bounty out for the dream butterfly that oh now you want to go help Maroha because you want a portion of the bounty she's going to get and I don't like that I asked you guys to come with me when we first found out about it and you both acted like you had better things to do oh but now that it can benefit you both too now you want to come and then just to add more dislike on top of it was the conversation that happened after they caught up with her. Setsuna decides to tell Maroha like, hey, yeah, we wanna come with you because we realize that you're like, you mean a lot to us and you are a loyal comrade. Like, but that's not why though. That's not why at all. And that's my biggest problem. Like, I don't like the fact that you're lying just to get some sort of benefit from this but to me that kind of shows how their parents personalities transferred down to the girls and i'll explain inuyasha growing up as a half demon we saw in the inuyasha series that his childhood wasn't great 
uh, he was not accepted by humans and he was also not accepted by demons so his biggest thing in the Inuyasha series was kind of just figuring out where he belonged and finding a group of people that could accept him which is kind of what we see now in Moroha. She was alone and she's not even a half demon. She is a quarter demon, which I can only imagine would make it so much harder. And she finally runs into two people that she feels like are her friends. And then we figure out, oh, on top of possibly being friends, we're family, we're cousins. And then it's like they group up together and exclude you. So I can see how that really ended up hurting her. But at the same time, when it comes to the twins, I thought it was just Setsuna, but I see a lot of, I can see a lot of Sashomaru and Toa too. And I say that because obviously Setsuna lied to Maroha about the reason why they were tagging along to help her on this bounty. Um, and that just shows Shishomaru's like self-serving personality. He really never did anything in the Inuyasha series that did not benefit him in the end, except when it came to saving Ren. And I see a lot of that in Setsuna. As far as Toa, I really thought she was going to be the more caring of the two and pick up Ren's personality. But she has like this tunnel vision thing where she's just focused on her mission and what she wants to do and nothing other. And it really disappointed me when she jumped, like it was basically her idea to like join Moroha on this bounty to basically use that to try and put a bounty on the green butterfly. Like I thought we would at least be better than that. I thought maybe there would be a sincere apology for not wanting to come and maybe even an explanation, a truthful explanation as to why they're trying to help her now. But that's not what happened. So, oh well. So yeah, that was basically uh, my biggest takeaways from this episode. I don't hate this episode, but I don't love this episode. It's just another filler. It almost seems like this episode didn't even fit after the one that we had last week. Like, after seeing, like, Setsuna destroy Yatsume, Kyuki being basically ended by Riku, and, like, everything that happened with that last episode, and then what we saw within those dreams, the fact that this whole episode went by and nobody brought up the dreams, we haven't talked about what we saw in this, none of it like i'm very confused like and then this episode was just like and even in the preview for the next episode it really seems like we're just getting more filler uh there was a reference to sashomaru in the sneak peek for next week some snake lady saying like she can finally get her revenge through having the twins fight each other i guess but i don't know I'm not gonna give up yet. I'm gonna stay strapped in and trying to see what happens because I need to know this is no longer a want. This is now a need. I need to know what happened with Inuyasha and Kagome and why Moroha was alone, why we flew her off with Hachi and where everybody is. So I hope you guys will be with me for the next episode. If you enjoy the shenanigans that I be talking about, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.